So I personally did not think that this was possible, but Ted Cruz, the uh, senator from Texas, who we all know and hate, he actually said something that was perfectly reasonable. Shocking, I know. And of course, since he said something that was agreeable to most reasonable human beings, it caused outrage among his Republican followers. And honestly, let's be clear, to even call his statement, his tweets, reasonable or even compassionate, it really just feels like we're giving him too much credit because this is the bare minimum. Like, it is the bare minimum expectation for basic human decency. But having said that, though, the bar is very low, so I do feel inclined to give him credit. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, without further ado, he reacted to this story shared by the New York Times on Monday, where they say the president of Uganda signed a punitive anti-gay bill on Monday that includes the death penalty enshrining into law an intensifying crackdown against LGBTQ people in the East African nation. It is one of the world's most restrictive anti-gay measures. Now, in response, Ted Cruz tweeted, this Uganda law is horrific and wrong. Any law criminalizing homosexuality or imposing the death penalty for aggravated homosexuality is grotesque and an abomination. All civilized nations should join together in condemning this human rights abuse. Hashtag LGBTQ. Now, I get it. The bar is very, very low here, right? He just simply said we shouldn't kill gay people or imprison them for life if they happen to be gay. It feels like he shouldn't get credit for this, but I'm going to give him credit for this given the climate in U.S. politics currently. Uh, because him saying that, believe it or not, is not something that his own supporters agree with. In fact, there were hundreds, if not thousands of responses to him where they unequivocally condemned him for denouncing this vehemently homophobic law. Here's a couple of examples here. LMAO, what are you conserving? Uganda is based. I want sodomy laws back. Homosexuality is a sign of civilizational decline. Grotesque abomination. Nah, the Uganda law is based and should be worldwide. Make homosexuality shameful again. You just lost my support. Ted Cruz is pro-butt sex. That's disgusting and anti-life. Why do you hate life, Ted? Gay is not okay. Uganda follows Christian values more closely than Texas. You should be ashamed. Uganda is based. It's actually pretty epic and will protect his country from the plague in which we suffer in America. Imagine how beautiful our country would be. Ted, I'm very disappointed in your take here. Homosexuality is sinful and unnatural. Maybe they saw how it unfolded here in the US. First, the gays wanted to get married and now they want to touch your kids. Seems pretty logical to me if you're Uganda. Right now, we made a societal mistake when we normalized deviancy. You would have hated God's law, Ted. Glad you're here now to fix all that God got wrong. Oh, Ted, I'm not even surprised you went gay. This person actually had to Google a photograph of two men kissing to dunk on Ted Cruz here. Really? You're hashtagging LGBTQ? Christianity must take a back seat in your life. Hashtag WWJD, which for those of you who don't know, stands for what would Jesus do? And um, yeah, Jesus would probably also want to kill gay people if you read the Bible. Another person said, delete this. And last but not least, woke Ted Cruz. So that is where we're at in 2023 America, folks. If you simply say that jailing gays for life is wrong or killing them is wrong, well, congratulations, you've been infected with the woke mind virus. And I understand that reading all of that is probably very depressing. I apologize for putting you through that. But I need people to understand that this is a very widespread sentiment. It's not like there were a couple of tweets with no engagement that denounced Ted Cruz. That was widespread. And a lot of those tweets had tons of likes, hundreds of likes in some instances. But to his credit, despite the backlash, he doubled down on this, I guess, highly controversial stance that you shouldn't kill gay people. And he doubled down in a response to former Trump attorney Jenna Ellis writing, Jenna, not sure why you're defending this barbaric Ugandan law. It imposes life imprisonment for consenting adults who engage in gay sex. That's ridiculous. You or I may or may not agree with their choices, but consenting adults should not go to jail for what they do in their own bedrooms. And as you can see here, she also called his tweet pro-gay. Because again, this is where we're at in 2023. Despite Ted Cruz's past as a passionate homophobe, he's now woke or pro-LGBTQ for simply denouncing life imprisonments or the death penalty for homosexuality.
it's just astonishing that we've come this far or we've we've fallen so much just within the span of a year particularly a couple of months it's it's really depressing but i do have some good news at the end of this video so stick around for that if this is kind of getting you down but i need people to understand that this extremist almost nazi-esque views that we're seeing from the right it doesn't just start and end with lgbtq plus people for example far-right influencer ian miles chong got ratioed into oblivion for simply responding to an anti-semitic tweet by saying jews aren't the problem and his followers roasted him and some of them even shared pro-hitler images because i mean of course but it doesn't even stop there because in response to a video of biden saying that he's taking unprecedented action to fight hate and anti-semitism lauren bobert responded by saying when they say stuff like this they they mean they want to go after conservatives. I mean, way to tell on yourself, Bobo. <laughs> what a fucking moron. But I want to stress that we're no longer just seeing typical right-wing bigotry. None of this is standard bigotry. Bigotry involves somebody not wanting a marginalized group to have civil rights. This rhetoric that we're seeing is extremist and genocidal, and you don't have to speculate where it would take us if we followed this ideology to its logical conclusion because they've already told us they want what uganda has in america and uganda's bill is so bad that again it is viewed as one of the, the most homophobic laws in the world but ironically uganda didn't necessarily come up with this by themselves this homophobic wave that we're seeing in uganda and other countries is the result of U.S. meddling. But first, let's get to the law itself. So as LGBTQ Nation explains, while homosexual sex was already punishable by life imprisonment in Uganda under the country's colonial era penal code, the new law imposes a life sentence for recruitment, promotion, and funding of same-sex activities, and even bans identifying as LGBTQ+. It makes what the law describes as acts of aggravated homosexuality punishable by the death penalty. As Politico notes, the law defines aggravated homosexuality as same-sex relations involving hiv positive people children or other vulnerable people now many of the fascists and ted cruz's replies used the law's definition of aggravated homosexuality to basically defend the law saying that this doesn't apply to all gays it only applies to hiv positive people and pedophiles specifically the problem however is that this law is framed so as to conflate homosexuality with pedophilia and it also suggests that gays are plague-ridden deviants who are knowingly spreading diseases but i mean what if two hiv positive gay people engaged in intercourse will they get life imprisonment or because of this law the death penalty i mean what if somebody simply accuses a gay person of being a pedophile what's the standard for evidence furthermore is this going to be a trojan horse for an expansion because their first law which criminalized homosexuality was expanded here so what's going to stop them from conflating a man acting to effeminate around a child as pedophilia i mean it is a very slippery slope here and we're already seeing a surge of homophobic harassment as a result of these laws but it's not just queer people who are being harassed. It's anyone who is perceived to be LGBTQ. So this will affect straight and cis people as well. That's what they don't realize. But I mean, when you have this culture that is deeply homophobic, you can't just create these exceptions and not expect innocent people to get caught up because they will get swept up in this. But even though politicians like Ted Cruz are against these laws, it should still worry us that there are so many right-wingers who publicly support laws that are this homophobic. But we shouldn't really be shocked by this because homophobia is something that American evangelicals exported to Uganda and other countries as well, to be clear. And they basically used these countries as testing grounds for their highly conservative social policies. And the goal ultimately is to export those policies back to the United States after seeing that they're successful 
in these countries where they're testing them out in. MSNBC columnist Nayara Haq explains American evangelical missionaries arrived in Uganda in the 1980s. They built medical clinics and schools as part of a strategic effort to prompt a religious revival in the developing world. The 1980s also marked the start of the AIDS epidemic that, at its peak, ended up infecting 30% of pregnant women in Uganda and 20% of adults across the continent. That epidemic also orphaned 34 million children across the continent. Missionaries in Uganda quickly adopted America's virulent homophobia to preach against what they argued was deviant sexual behavior. It did not matter that AIDS in Africa was mostly spread by straight people. Lou Eagle, an evangelical leader from Kansas City, Missouri, known for his opposition to abortion and gay people, brought Ugandan preachers to America for training and education. American church leaders have also had a direct hand in Uganda's criminalization of LGBTQ people. The PBS documentary God Loves Uganda features Scott Lively, a religious personality who blames homosexuals for the Holocaust and follows his celebrity rise in East Africa. In that documentary, we see Lively appearing on talk shows and addressing the Ugandan parliament in favor of the 2009 version of the anti-homosexual bill. Now, the original version of the 2009 law referenced in that article was originally dubbed the Kill the Gays Bill because it originally wanted to kill all gay people simply for being gay. But the compromise was life imprisonment. And it, as you can see, that law is being expanded here. It just was expanded. Now, Scott Lively is one of many American evangelicals to spread bigotry across Africa and especially in Uganda. And they're successful at doing this because of their methods. So they'll do actual charity work for these impoverished communities, and they'll build schools, they'll offer them uh, food, housing, but in turn, they indoctrinate them. And, you know, it sounds reasonable because if your village is struggling and hungry and you have this American come along and offer you food, and in exchange all you have to do is listen to them preach to you, that sounds pretty reasonable on its face, right? But that's how they indoctrinate these villages into their hateful ideology. And they kind of saw Uganda as a sort of testing ground. And for those unaware, Americans have been using other countries as laboratories for their shitty policies since forever. Another example is how American neoliberals used Chile to test out privatizing Social Security, which has been disastrous, doesn't even begin to explain it, but it's been a colossal mistake. But this is what they do, right? With regard to Africa, for example, a large portion of non-governmental organizations are religious. So you begin to see why these countries slowly but surely adopt social conservatism because they are influenced by these Western preachers who come in and they're nice to them. And again, they offer you all of these resources. They offer you charity. All you have to do is listen to them preach hate to you. It's honestly despicable, it's, it's exploitative, but this is what they've been doing. And Pastor Rick Warren, who spread homophobia in Africa, apparently had a guilty enough conscience to come out and publicly denounce Uganda's Kill the Gays bill back in 2009 because he knew how nefarious and predatory their actions in Africa were. But now you hear conservatives ironically saying that us being against homophobic laws like this is us basically exporting woke when no, no no the social conservatism the bigotry is what we exported originally but in short gay people have always existed in uganda and regardless of what laws they pass gay people will continue to exist as is the case in any country but the difference is that a bunch of bloodthirsty evangelicals convinced ugandans that the existence of gay people is wrong. And that's why we're seeing so many laws. Their influence is far and wide in some of these countries. But as depressing as the story may be, I want to make it very clear that not every country is moving backwards when it comes to LGBTQ plus rights. Because as Pink News explains, on Tuesday, May 30th, Nagoya District Court became the second to rule against Japan's banning of same-sex marriage, despite the country's prime minister, Fumio Kishida, claiming the ban wasn't discriminatory to the LGBTQ plus community. The ruling, welcomed by activists and supporters outside the court, follows Japan's main opposition, the Constitutional Democratic Party, CDP, submitting a bill calling for same-sex marriage to be legalized. Now, what I also love to hear is that Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's lack of support for gay marriage is one of, if not the main reason, why his support is just imploding. So his approval rating dropped by 
30 points last year. And as his approval rating goes down, support for marriage equality goes up. In fact, 69% of Japanese citizens, nice, support marriage equality and 68% support gay adoption. So to see their homophobic prime minister hemorrhage support in part due to his refusal to support a policy that the overwhelming majority of the population wants... I mean, it demonstrates that not every single country is following the U.S. backwards when it comes to LGBTQ plus rights. Now, the reason why this is happening is because progress isn't always linear. Like we kind of visualize progress as always moving forward, but sometimes you take a couple of steps forward and a lot of steps backwards. There's periods of progress that are rapid, right? That was the 2010s for uh, LGBTQ plus rights, especially gay marriage rights. There's always going to be swift periods of progress followed by rapid regression. But what matters the most at the end of the day is that the trend overall, I think, ultimately heads in a positive direction. And despite the GOP's genocidal rhetoric, I do believe that we are also headed in a positive direction, even if it doesn't necessarily seem that way now. But just remember that the biggest bigots are also the loudest. So what we're hearing now basically is a last-ditch effort by bigots to turn the country against LGBTQ plus people, but it's probably too late for them. And while the damage that they're causing is palpable, it's real, we're feeling it now, I do believe that this is only temporary. So keep that in mind if you start to feel depressed from these stories, because I feel it too, but understand that things will get better because we didn't think that they could possibly improve before, and they did. So all of this is temporary, and we just have to keep fighting because the second we give up and we cede ground to these bigots, that's when they win. That's when they pounce. So just hang in there, as difficult as uh, as it may be. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and win find out. Prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay pride.